The reason why entrepreneurs start their business is because they want to be able to have unlimited freedom that comes with running a company and the high ceiling of achievement where they could earn hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. However, most agency owners don't know how to do this and end up getting stuck in the day-to-day -day operation without being able to take any time off. When agency owners do try to scale by themselves, they risk the quality of their work because they don't know how to scale through team members. They don't know how to hire, train, onboard effectively, and they're unsure how to manage their team members and their processes effectively at scale so they risk their quality of work and their reputation. I was able to map out eight specific steps that you can follow to remove yourself from your company's operations so you can focus your time, energy, and effort on scale or just enjoying your life. Now, the first step is always the same step, and this is something I've covered in a previous video, and it's to map out your workflow. When it comes to building any business, your workflow is the process of once you close a deal, everything that comes with the fulfillment of your service. Your workflow is going to have two distinct sections. The first section is going to be onboarding, which includes gathering all the information, aligning with the client, making sure you're on the same page, giving them all the details, setting up your initial calls and everything in between. And your process after that is what I call the loop process. The loop process is the thing that you do every single quarter over and over and over. If you guys are running a media agency, you're going to be reviewing budget spend, results, you're gonna start split testing new campaigns, seeing what the ROI was, so on and so forth. Now, what you have to do in this workflow is map out every single step of your process. Map out who the owner is of each step. Map out the SOP of each step. Map out the software that's needed in each step. Map out if each step is an internal step or an external client facing step. Map out the potential issues that might arise in a specific step. Now there's a lot more that could be included in here, but the most important thing is what is each step who does each step, how long should each step take, and when is it due? If you can map this out, this will lead to the other steps. The second most important thing when it comes to building a business that could work without you is dialing in your SOPs and training. SOPs stand for Standard Operating Procedures, and these are documents that tell people what to do. If you check out my video, Creating SOPs, How to Write Standard Operating Procedures, I go in full depth on how to effectively execute this. The other thing you need to start doing is writing training. Now, the difference between these two is SOPs tell people what to do, trainings teach people how to think. Once you have this workflow, you will have a list of everything that you need to templatize, standardize, and build trainings and SOPs for that will teach your team members and your future team members how to execute for your business. The number one thing I like to encourage my clients to do is kill two birds with one stone. When you come up upon a step that you are doing that's in your workflow, that needs an SOP or a training, pull up a Loom video and click record. Now, as you do that task, which you're going to do anyway, all you have to do is speak over it and just speak normally as if you're building a training. Hey guys, this is Jordan. In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through how I like to write SEO blogs. And then you just walk them through that. Over time, you're gonna aggregate a bunch of SOPs and trainings and create a nice library of content to standardize your training for your company. What this is going to enable you to do is have effective training at scale. The third most important thing beyond this is to dial in your org chart. Now, most businesses think their org chart is that thing that shows who reports to whom. But the most important things that I really like to dial in are the responsibilities, goals, and KPIs of each role. Now, if you only set clear expectations with everyone on your team, you're doubling the likelihood of success per role. Now, when it comes to your org chart very specifically, if you do this, it's going to be really easy to hold your people accountable and coach them when they stray away from the standard. It's also going to enable you to start to manage your team at scale because you're going to want to incentivize your team and it's easy to incentivize your team if you have goals that when they hit, you could further pay them or give them bonuses. Once you have these three steps, the next step is fourth, which is project management. From a high level, all you need to do to execute your project management is take your workflow, templatize it inside your project management, and that will cover one aspect of your projects. You'll need to have an area for ad hoc requests that comes from clients and team members and an area for your standard work. Your standard work are the things that you and your team members need to do every single day, every single week, continuously. The standard work enables you to effectively manage your team because it's easy to have visibility via an end of day report. If you have these three things, it's easy to templatize what is due 
And when it's due, build reports that allow you as a manager to make sure everyone's getting their work done on time so you don't have to stress around micromanaging. At this level, you have your workflow, you have clear expectations, you have effective training and SOPs, and you have effective project management. This is the bare minimum that you need in your business to operate with team members working for you. At this point, you can start to hire. Now, when it comes to hiring talent, there's two types of talent that you need to consider. The first one is administrative talent. Now, administrative talent are individuals that you could probably pay for less than $10 an hour. On Upwork, there's people from around the world that you can even pay three to $5 an hour because in those countries, three to $5 an hour is actually a good living. The way I like to source these individuals is by going on Upwork, posting the job, I recently posted a job for a list builder and I filtered out all 150 applicants by anyone who had more than 90% success rating, anyone who had made more than $1,000, and anyone that was requesting less than $10 per hour. This gave me a list of about 20 individuals. From here, what I did with this list is I hired 10 people who had 100% success rate and at least $5 or less per hour. I hired these people for a one hour paid test, gave them an assignment, and the person who did the best job with the least amount of training got hired. That's how you can hire administrative roles. The other side of this though, is you need to identify the roles that you need to hire for your agency. So when you look at your workflow, what are all the roles in fulfillment? We're working presently with a YouTube agency and in their YouTube agency, they have video editors, they have someone that does project management, account management, strategy, and quality assurance. So in this agency, they need to hire for five roles. What we mapped out for this founder was being able to build a strategic plan when they should hire each role, how to hire each role, and who's going to oversee this department. Now, for you specifically, my recommendation is hiring people that can already do the job on a technical level. You could post job on LinkedIn, on Upwork, on Indeed. These are my three favorite platforms. And when someone applies, you want to send them in a test. At a bare minimum, you want to ensure before you interview someone, they pass your technical assessment. If you're looking to source a YouTube editor, you want to source someone that already knows how to edit YouTube videos effectively, so you don't have to train them. This is harder. You're going to have to pay more but it's worth your time training someone from scratch takes six to 24 months and it could take a lot of time and it doesn't always work. So from a high level, when it comes to your talent, you want to hire people that can technically do the job, but then also meet your values. You're going to want to map out those values that are a non-negotiable for you. Some of mine are ownership, delivering results, customer obsession, earning trust, and diving deep. These are things that I require my team to know. I require them to live by these rules. And if you don't, I'm not gonna enjoy working with you and it's not gonna be successful. So when I interview, I ask future-based questions around these principles and I put my prospects into a scenario. Here's a situation. A client is mad on a Friday afternoon because something broke in their campaign. You have to leave to go to a friend's engagement. What do you do? In this moment, you get to see how people truly respond. Your grading rubric should be scaled on a zero, one, or two points. If you do 10 questions, I recommend that the grading rubric shows at least 18 points to be higher. Now at this point, once you hire these roles, there's three steps left. The next step that's the most important probably is training. Now, even though you could hire effective talent, I still, at my run rate of a multi-million dollar business, I'm still training my team members at least one to two hours a day. What we do in my business is we audit work through a standard work checklist. We audit performance by recording calls because we're a consulting company. What you can do is record or audit work and then we do one-on-one -on -one training and development. That's the area that I spend the most time on. So training is really hard because it does require a lot of time. And the biggest thing that I would encourage you to do is block time in your calendar to train your team one-on-one. -on -one. Usually when it comes to running an agency, you're gonna be the best one at the skill. And it's not gonna be easy to train others on that skill. The number one thing I would recommend is to sit down, review their work, go through their work with them and develop them and make them better understand how you see the game of marketing. If you do this, their lessons learned will compound and eventually you'll get to a point where you're not needed. Once you figure out training, the next most important thing to fully remove yourself from your business is customer success. Customer success is the process of increasing your lifetime value of your clients 
and keeping your clients. I'm gonna be talking about two specific things that enable you to keep your clients after three and six months. And the first one is QBRs, which stands for quarterly business reviews. Quarterly business reviews are a great tool to use on a quarterly basis where you review where you were when you started or where you were last you spoke to your client last quarter, where you are now, where you're at in their campaign, what their ROI has been so far and what the results and wins have been so far and where you're going. If they continue to work with you, what your forecasts are for the future. Now, there's a few other things that you could share, updates on their account, lessons learned about the marketplace and lessons learned on an aggregate level. And you could also show these things to them on a monthly basis. But what's most important here is every quarter you need to go into sales mode when you present. Clients on an unconscious level are always getting antsy and until they have full trust in you, it's your job to fully assure them that you have their best interests at heart and you're actually doing the job the right way. A quarterly business review is one of the easiest ways that you could assure this. The second way that's extremely important for getting yourself out of your operation and building a business that could work without you is continuous improvement. What I ended up doing in my business once I hit the multi-million dollar level was bring on my COO and his responsibility has been to make our service world-class. What he's responsible for is templatizing everything, standardizing all of our documents and training, and turning all of our content and intellectual property into something that could be renowned on an international level. Now, you don't have to do this for your business, but you do wanna take the feedback that you get from your customers and whether it's yourself or a team member, make your processes better. A great example of this actually comes in a story from one of my most recent clients. He informed us that he didn't see all the work we were doing in our auditing process and he asked us to see all the work we were doing. What we realized was even though we're doing a significant amount of work, we didn't have a slide in our debrief that showed this. Now, from that feedback, we added a specific slide in our debrief that shows a summation of every single issue we found. Usually the issues that we find in the agencies are ranging in the 100 to 200 issues range. We now show this in every debrief presentation, which shows our clients where their issues are, but also shows our clients that we are doing this. If you do these two things, continually make your business better through feedback, continually update your processes, and you continually execute on your QBR, you should be able to increase the lifetime value of your clients. And the final thing to exit your operation and day to day is you need to have someone take over the head of marketing and head of sales. When I took off in summer of 2022, I took off a full month and traveled Europe. What I didn't realize was I didn't have an effective marketing system that would continue to set the appropriate amount of appointments. I think I only set about 15 or 20 so appointments that month. What I started to do was build systems over the next 12 months that enabled me to take off for a month and still set 100 appointments a month. So when it comes to marketing, it doesn't have to be you, but you could hire ghostwriters, you could hire SDRs and inbox managers. You could have people run your content. You could have individuals run your cold outreach. You could have individuals cold call for you. Marketing is pretty straightforward where you don't need to be the one running it. You just need to hire people to do it in the similar process that we talked about for fulfillment. When it comes to an agency, the number one thing I recommend is have a two-part sales process. The first part should be consultative. If you sell paid media or SEO, you don't want to automatically go into pitching. You want to find someone that's really knowledgeable around your service and is highly charismatic. So that way they can conduct audits for your sales prospects and then create a custom roadmap that would enable them to scale. When you do this, you build trust and credibility on your service delivery, and then you could find a closer. If that person isn't a natural sales professional, they can do the first call and then they could bring in your closer to share your price, share your logistics and handle objections. And that's the most common thing I recommend for agency owners. So if you really wanna exit, you'll need to find someone to do audits and you'll need to be able to find a closer. Now, for both of these, there's a lot of places you can find these individuals. Upwork, LinkedIn, and Facebook groups are the most common places I recommend finding both of these roles because it's pretty easy to find individuals that are great at both marketing skills and also selling. The hard thing is finding the right person that's gonna be a fit for you. Now, if you follow all these steps to a T, you'll successfully remove yourself from the operation and have the freedom that you've always wanted. But this is a lot easier said than done. Doing this by yourself can be difficult and you'll likely face many challenges along the way that are hard to overcome. That's why at my business, 8-Figure Agency, we can work with you in a one-on-one -on -one capacity to build a roadmap that will let you get out of the prison that you built yourself and enable you to scale. We work with you in a one-on-one -on 
one fashion on this roadmap, talk to you weekly that ensures your hand is being held as you build the right systems and build the right processes. And most important, everyone that works for my business has already built an eight figure business. So we know not only how to get you to the seven and multi seven figure run rate, but we also know how to get you to the eight figure run rate. If you want to talk to us and learn more about how we can help you, go to the link below in the description and book a call. Also, if you'd like to learn how to make effective SOPs, which is an essential part in removing yourself from the business, please click here where I can show you how to do it.